Hey guys, so one question I get asked quite a lot is involving the pinky or the little finger and that is do you have to use it uh, to play the guitar? Now the short answer is no, you don't have to. So there we go, end of video, bye, see you next time, cheers. Okay, so it probably does need a little bit of mediation. So if you want to know more, let's zoom in and have a closer look at what's going on. So one question I do get asked which is related to this whole subject is what about using it down the lower frets? <laughs> But once you get up here and it gets higher and the frets get closer together, is it okay to use the first three fingers instead? And yeah, of course it is, absolutely. If it works, why not? As long as you're able to still do what it is you want to do. So changing from doing something like this to the first three fingers instead, it's absolutely okay. Where it might give you a little bit of issue is if you're gonna do something a bit more sequential like want to play a run in the uh, E minor scale, going from this with your third, second and first finger to that shape might give you a bit of an issue because your second finger there is hovering above the 14th after you've just played that shape and now it's got to go to that shape there. Um, and when it involves using the first three fingers, usually the thing which is most common is this shape here which involves a whole tone and then a semitone between the second and third fingers. Now, nobody really has any trouble with that using the first three fingers, even down here. Even down here in F. But if you want to start being a bit more modal, then that can be a little bit of an issue, crossing from down there with this shape because you've got a semitone and then you've got a whole tone between the second and third fingers. That's a little bit more uh, of a demand on your fingers here. Now, when you're up on the higher frets, it's not so bad, they're closer together so you're not having to stretch as far. But if you were down here, say like in G for example. Okay, now doing stuff like this, feels a little bit less natural. Okay, so it's a lot easier to go with the pinky there. That doesn't mean it can't be done, you can train yourself to do it, but it's, um, it does kind of pull on the front of your hand quite a lot down there and doesn't feel very comfortable. Doesn't mean you can't train yourself to do it, as I said, but maybe you should consider whether it's a better way to spend your time to train your little finger to start taking on the role in examples such as this rather than forcing yourself to make it work. However, it is worth bearing in mind a lot of this stuff, using your pinky or not using your pinky, really does come down to the type of stuff you play anyway. You know, if you are a more pentatonic bass player who does a lot of two note per string stuff, most of what you do can be taken care of with these first three. And if you're happy with that, that's absolutely fine. There's no need to change it. You can get a lot of mileage out of that. Having that dexterity where you can play something pentatonic and then add the occasional modal note, like a ninth or a major sixth or the flat and fifth. But if you want to start branching out and kind of moving a bit more sideways, being a bit more linear about things, uh, then you might have to start making some decisions. Now you can get away with doing it if you're doing a lot of slides and hammers and pulls and you're just doing two note per string and you don't really want to increase your hand span much, you can do. can be moving around like that but you are limited to um, how sequential you can make it so if you want to do something that was very much a three note per string now you're gonna find that a lot more awkward it is an option right and if you're comfortable with that great you know none of this is mandatory um, but you know if you don't have particularly big hands and you don't want to push your hands too much you don't want to stretch or give an injury or anything like that, you might just ask yourself the question, is it worth me really pushing it and forcing myself to be able to do this? Or is it worth the effort of me just getting the little finger up to speed so it can handle these things? Even if you're a pentatonic guy and you just want a little bit more freedom, instead of being relegated to, you know, being more vertical and box shapes, like that, and you want to go a bit more modal, 
this just opens it up for you, you know, it gives you more reach. And it doesn't have to be anything uh, mind-bending in terms of speed. Now, a lot of people mention Michael Schenker because he's very known for using those first three fingers, but a lot of people say that he never uses his pinky and they always hold him up as an example of someone who doesn't use their pinky. And the thing is, um, he does actually use his pinky a lot. It's just not as much as a lot of other players, so people have formed this opinion over the years that he doesn't use his pinky, but it's actually not true. He does. Uh, for example, one of his solos in Armed and Ready, for example, there's this section here, it's a modal section. Now, as you can see there, that uses the pinky. This is really nice step up shape in E Aeolian. And whilst you could make yourself do it with the first three fingers, it's just easier to do it with the fourth, and Michael himself does it with the pinky. So uh, it just goes to show you can employ the pinky, even if you're a guy who religiously uses the first three for pretty much everything, you can still get the pinky on board and use it to do stuff which is just really inefficient by using the first three. And it's not going to destroy your style or change you into a mindless shredder or anything like that. So I think a lot of people avoid gaining extra dexterity out of some sort of, I don't know, righteous fear that they're going to turn into a shredder or something, it doesn't matter, you know, you're not going to if you don't want to play that type of stuff, it's just, you're never going to suffer from having more dexterity, it, it's a bit like the question of should you know theory or should you read music, no you don't have to, um, but you're never going to be a worse player for it, so whilst it's not necessary, um, it won't hurt you for being uh, a bit more dexterous and having the ability of the uh, pinky there. Right, the best way to work on the pinky is not playing stuff involving picking, like... It's not trying to do it all together at once. You need to isolate the fretting hand and work on the strength. And you do need strength. A lot of people say you don't, it's not about strength, blah, blah, blah. No, it is at the beginning, because you need structural integrity. Without that, you can't have anything else. It's like, um, I'll, I'll give you an example. Um, now, I've seen enough in horses, for example, if you watch a horse on the ground uh, being asked to do exercises and certain movements, if they don't have strength in a certain area of their body, they don't want to do the movement that is being asked of them, so they will rush through it to try and get away from what it is that you're asking them to do. They'll, do, they'll evade, okay, because they don't have the structural integrity, and because they don't have the structural integrity, they don't have the mobility either. And it's a little bit like that with us, okay? It's like anything physical. It's like people who can't do exercises properly because they don't have the physicality, so they'll rush through it. And like We've all seen people doing really bad press-ups. I'm sure some of us have even done those bad press-ups instead, like with your ass in the air, or you know, with your, your butt too close to the ground, and you look like a, you know, a piece of loose spaghetti just going up and down rapidly, you know, and it's not a proper push-up. It's, it's, it's a travesty of a push-up, you know, because you're trying to rush the movement because you don't have strength, all right? So hopefully that just settles that and people don't keep going on about whether you need to have strength or not, because of course you do. So I developed a really cool, effective, easy exercise that works all of your finger dexterity. You can get it for free on my site, okay? It's called the warm-up, and it's going to go through all of those fingers and sort them out and get the strength needed to make them independent. Um, but I'll give you another one, and this is very vi-ish, but this is just, um, it's going to go through all fingers, and you just start here with your index finger on the 12th fret, and we're going to, that's it. Rather than just isolating the little finger and just going until your hand falls off, which is an option, but you might want to sort of wait until you're already warmed up and you've done a bit of work before you start doing that. Otherwise, you'll just um, wear yourself out too quickly within like a minute and then that's it. You can't really do anything else now. So it's better to start off and get to that point of exhaustion with your pinky later, but not, not yet, okay? So um, we're going to work all fingers together. And the reason it's useful to work these ones as well, because if these ones were already strong, these are giving you a visual and a physical reference of how you want it to feel with the pinky. So if you have uh, some strong notes being played by these three fingers, then you have a really weak hammer-on with your pinky, it's gonna be very noticeable, okay? So it's a good reference point for you. It's instant feedback. 
And uh, if you have issues with playing stuff with just the fretting hand, then make sure you're pulling off correctly as well. I'll link you to another video below which goes into using pull-offs correctly. Okay, and really isolation until you get the strength in these fingers is the best way to do it. Rather than trying to marry everything together at once in playing scalar runs and then never getting anywhere, it really is best to just treat these problems at the source, so isolate this. So just to recap, the index finger is fretting the note of E and the third finger is going to be taking care of G, pull off and hammer on to the F sharp with the second finger, pull off, hammer on again to the G and then with the little finger you can hammer on to the A. So you just pick once at the beginning and then everything else is fingers. And I do recommend trying to get the timing right in this as well because if you don't it can disguise weak fingers because when you try and rush through things it can hide the fact that your fingers don't have the strength to maintain their position, okay? So it's good to set up a click or a metronome or something like that. Um, but before you get to that point, you might find that you spend most of your time concentrating on trying to just get your little finger to even hammer right. Because if you've never really used this, then the first problem you're going to have is getting this to even hammer in the right place. You might find that it wants to miss the string entirely, or you just don't have the sort of the, uh, the strength in that finger, or you're going to get... Uh, a divot in your finger and you'll get a, a blister really quickly. So that's probably going to be your first problem anyway, which is just getting that finger used to hammering on. So you might not even get to the point where you're even worried about the timing, first of all. But anyway, just take that one and work with that. But if you haven't already, grab the warm-up. That's got the, probably the best exercise I've ever found. Um, and I'm not just saying that because I made it, although I might be saying that because I made it. But no, it really is really good. I use it myself and that works all the dexterity of your finger. So go and grab that now. Anyway guys, so hopefully that's answered your questions about using the pinky. You don't have to, but it won't, won't hurt you if you do. Okay, so until next time guys, take up your guitar, go for what you want, take no shit. See you next time.